Folding at home is nothing new. It's a distributed computing project whose goal is to use the idle computational power of thousands of individual contributors around the world to run simulations of protein dynamics. In layman's terms, whenever you're not using them, your CPU or your graphics card can crunch numbers to help improve our understanding of biology or even develop treatments for diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, cystic fibrosis, and yes, COVID-19, which brings us perfectly to the purpose of today's video. We actually did a build guide four years ago showing how to configure a PC for contributing to projects like this. But guys, the situation's a little more dire at the moment, and we need more than just the enthusiasts who are building computers specifically for folding to pitch in. So guys, dig through your closets. If you can find some compute, it's time to put it to work. Uh, here, over here, in the corner here, in my office, we found a little machine that wasn't really doing anything else, and we're gonna use this to walk you guys through a quick guide for how you can be up and running folding at home in what? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? I think this is going to take us a little longer, but you could probably do it in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> the video today is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet wants to redefine the wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. Check out how they can help keep Wallet Bulge down and use offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Okay, look, I, I get it. Especially if you guys are new to the channel, I understand that you're wondering right now, why exactly do you guys have a machine of this caliber quite literally lying around collecting dust in a warehouse? It's got dual Xeon Platinum 8180s, so those are 28 core processors. It has six NVIDIA Titan V graphics cards, so they were built based on the very short-lived Volta architecture, so even though they're not, uh, you know, RTX or whatever. In terms of compute, they're actually very similar to an RTX 2080 Ti. And yes, that is a solid mass of six of them right there. It used to have, uh, I don't know, 200, 384. 384 gigs of RAM. Right now it's got quite a bit less than that, but uh, we scavenged the RAM out of it because it was just sitting there and that was easy to get at anyway. The original purpose of this machine was to slice up the hardware resources using virtualization to have six eight core workstations, each with its own graphics card, and then have six people editing 8K video off of one box at the same time. And then we were supposed to do a video showcasing the sheer might of it running just one operating system. So we left it assembled, but then we just never did it. That day. Uh, we do have a couple of issues with it. One of the GPUs wasn't showing up, so I want to do a quick and kind of reinstall them. Also, our power supply is hanging out the back. And one of the things that we needed for the original build, this is a really, really funky piece of computer equipment. It's a, it's a PCI Express 16X to external adapter, and then it goes out to a daughter board that we used to have USB cards that could be assigned to each one of our virtual machines. We don't need that anymore. Super cool, not necessary today. Thank you, Jake. I'm gonna pop these GPUs out and then plonk them back in. Yeah, you gotta just, just send her. Ah, my shoulder. Oh man, something about this doesn't seem right. <laughs> okay, seems to be in there. Is it possible that this will be the most powerful machine on the folding at home network? No, because the liquid guys spun up a virtualized, I think he said like 16 quadro 8000s. Okay. Just to flex. Mark, you better be folding for LTT. I mean, he must be, right? We have a quarter as many members, but almost the same output, so. Oh, you mean a PCMR? Yeah. Okay, guys, by the way, PCMR has four times the folders that LTT does. There's no excuse for it. So let's, let's, let's get on that. Just Google LTT folding team number and uh, let's, get, let's get those numbers juiced up. What we just did was add a jumper so that both power supplies will receive a signal from the motherboard at exactly the same time and turn on simultaneously. The reason we need two power supplies is twofold. Number one is that these are EVGA's 1600 watt 80 plus titanium units and they simply don't make anything bigger than that. The problem is that our GPUs alone are rated at 1500 watts, leaving us 100 watts for drives, pumps, uh, CPUs, all that other good stuff. So we were gonna need two power supplies anyway. Two is that here in North America, our breakers don't go any higher than 1600 watts plus inefficiency. So we would need to plug into two separate circuits if we wanted all GPUs and CPUs firing at once, which we do. Wow, so just firing up doing nothing else 
it's drawing 200 and, wow, almost 300 watts from just one of the power supplies. <laughs> okay, VGA connection. Hey, that's not what I was expecting. Did we, oh God, did you disconnect the, oh no. You've <laughs> gotta be kidding me. There's no way. Did our boot drive come out? Did we, did we trip a breaker? <laughs> We really do have a way of making things look a lot harder than they are. We spent the last day troubleshooting it. We actually eventually solved it with a motherboard swap, which necessitated a CPU block swap, which meant we had to redo all the tubing, refill it. Anyway, the point is, it's working, and this is the original board we'd actually planned to use for this project, but there was an issue with the PCI Express lanes. But check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so now all we need to do is show you guys how to install folding at home. Okay, so to get folding at home running, it's really simple actually. We'll have a link down in the description where you can actually just download the client straight off their website. Um, you don't have to unzip it or anything, just download it, double click to start. So by default, it's actually gonna open up a web interface. Now this makes it really easy to set up your identity. So we're gonna start by doing that. And then later on, I'm gonna open up the actual program that gives you a lot more control over what's happening. So you wanna pick set up an identity because now we're gonna be folding on the LTT team, not for team default, both of which is totally fine, but we want you guys on our team so we can bump up the stats and beat PCMR. So click on set up an identity and click start folding. Inside the identity tab, we're gonna see three things, username, team number and pass key. Now all of these things are important. We're gonna set our name to LMG underscore Jakku and then team number, which you can actually get from the link in the description on our forum post here. It's 223518. This will set you up on the LTT team. And then you wanna get a pass key. Now this is gonna require you to enter your email and you'll actually get it emailed to you. Um, they use it as sort of an authentication so other people can't steal credit for your points. Um, and it gives you a bonus. You'll really wanna use it if you wanna amp up those stats. So once you've got your username, team number, and passkey entered, just hit save, and it'll start folding right away. Now, because we want a little bit more control over, say, what CPU cores are running or when it runs, we're actually gonna open up the advanced control. So down in the taskbar, you can right click on the folding app, go to advanced control, and it'll open up the actual Windows app where we can pick and choose individual GPUs or what have you. Now, I'm gonna say that maybe I don't want my CPU to fold. So we're gonna pause our CPU, and all of our GPUs will be left running, which is perfect, and then I'm gonna right click on the little icon down here and set it to on idle. Now that means it's only gonna go when my computer is not doing other things. I'm also gonna turn the client up to full power. Now this means it's gonna use as much of your CPU and GPU as possible. Now we paused our CPU, so it's only gonna be doing GPU, but this means we're gonna get the most performance when we're actually not even using the computer because it's on idle only. And that's basically all there is to it. We're now folding for the LTT team. We've got our pass key set up, which means we're gonna get the most points possible. And now that's all that's left is just to wait and see what kind of stats we push out. If you wanna see your stats, you might notice that the official folding stats page, I mean, depending on when you watch this video, might actually be down because of all the additional load of all the new users. So we're gonna actually use something called Extreme Overclocking. Their forum has a really great custom script setup so you can actually see all your stats even when the official site is down. Um, it will take several hours to update. You can see right now our hourly production, at least on my user, is still zero, but if you check back in a day or maybe 12 hours or something, you should see your points start to go up. You were telling me about this. So even though we have all these compute resources, the folding project is struggling to issue work units. So what, we're only using one sixth of our capacity? One right now. So basically what happened is they went from 30,000 users kind of concurrently over the last couple of years to 400,000 in the order of about two weeks. So <laughs> those servers are getting hit pretty hard. And the, the big problem isn't so much issuing the work units. We can actually see on this one, it's stuck on send results, waiting on send results. So they actually don't have the bandwidth to take all the, the computed models and store them on their own servers right now. However, here's something cool that that we wanna share with you guys. We are currently in the process of working with the Folding at Home project to use some of our bandwidth, because we happen to have a 10 gigabit connection here at the office, to run a Folding at Home work unit server here on our premises. So that's gonna be our next video, where basically we'll be able to, can we preferentially issue ourselves work units? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, let's have a look at what the impact is on your system 
if you were able to run full tilt. Here we go, this is Octane Bench. Our GPU temps right now are in the low 30s, so that's what we would expect for water-cooled graphics cards. Let's go ahead and click run. So this one's only about 350 watt. We're at 463 watts. Wait, that's it? I'm still at 350, so what's that, 850 watts? That's it on two 1600 watt power supplies? This is great. We weren't actually using that much power, so I'm installing Blender in the background, and we still put up these insane numbers. Here's a GTX 980 for context. That is over 20 times faster. While I was doing stuff in the background, <laughs> this thing is nuts. Time to try something a little heavier. Oh, Afterburner's reporting 90% usage. So what's our power consumption look like? I've got 400 watts this time. I can climb under them. Wow, it's already at 720 watts. What are you at? 400. Okay, so we're up to 1100 watts now. It still hasn't started yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's heavy. It's getting really warm in here. We literally have a thousand watt heater just <laughs> So that's quite a lot more than Octane, but my understanding is that folding at home should actually hit it even harder than that. Yeah, especially because we can use some of the CPU at the same time. So if you were wondering if there's gonna be an impact on your home heating or your power bill, the answer is yes, but by and large it's for a good cause. So the good news is if you already use electric heating, this is basically the same thing. Just turn some of it off and also have it not be summer. Yeah. Also good news, just because it uses up your CPU and GPU doesn't mean it's going to interfere when you're trying to actually use your computer. There's a setting in the client where you can tell it, look, only fold when I'm idle so that it's not going to interfere with my gaming or my work or whatever the case may be. That is an issue that I had had years back with the client and that I found kind of annoying, but they've got that resolved. So there's basically no drawback. So check out the link in the video description. Join the LTT folding team. It's going to be great. Yeah, we actually even do giveaways and stuff once in a while. Should we do yeah. one? Yeah, let's let's do one in the next little bit. Also in the video description, link to our sponsor, Privacy. Anytime you buy anything online, you give your personal information to merchants and their data partners, and it happens without clear consent. So it's important to ensure that your online presence is safe and secure. With Privacy.com, you'll be armed with the free tool that makes it easy to manage your financial life online, keeping your most important information secure. By generating virtual numbers, Privacy masks your real bank information so you never have to worry about giving it out to people you don't know online. You can create up to 12 cards a month on their free personal plan, and they've launched two paid versions, Pro and Teams. Pro is $10 a month with more security and privacy features, plus 1% cash back on all purchases and up to 36 cards a month. Pro is the same as Teams, except it's $25 a month. You get dedicated account management, access to 60 cards a month, and transaction limits that are tailored to your business needs. They're PCI DSS compliant, they use military military grade encryption and you can check them out today at privacy.com slash Linus. We'll have that linked below. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed seeing this hot machine in action, maybe check out the epic saga that was getting it working in the first place. Man, early BIOSes suck compared to mature ones, right? This was just plug and play. Yeah. And it boots up so fast. I know, right?